What's up, friends? We are, how's everyone doing? Good to see you guys. We are back in Ulti's stream doing some mead making 2.0. We're gonna be racking all the fun stuff tonight. What's up, friends? We are... That's my phone doing an echo. But yeah, we're excited to have everyone here and excited to get back into this madness. Well, it's not madness, it's fun. And by the way, I'm DJ Rebirth. I'm, if you do exclamation point MC, you can learn all about me, but it's not about me. It's all about Mr. Alti. Speaking of which, oh, wait, here, let me get out of frame. Wait, wait, wait. There he is. There's our guy. Can you guys hear us okay? Do we, do we sound good? Does everything sound good? Everything sounded good from your echo. Awesome. So. Oh, yeah, that's right. It must be good. All right, well, we're going to do some learning again tonight. It's not going to take very long, but it is an important step in the brewing life cycle, and it is racking. And the first question I usually get is, what is racking? Well, it's basically just changing vessels to get rid of sediment, yeast, things like that. And we're going to put on our examination gloves again because sanitation is paramount. And we're going to torture good old DJ Rebirth here at least once tonight. Oh, heck yeah. I'm, I'm down to taste some, some brewings. Because last time it was probably a little sweet. This time it's going to be the exact opposite. It's oh, probably yeah. going to be a little sickeningly... Uh, Bitter, perhaps? Um, just, uh, I don't know, you'll see. It's hard to describe. <laughs> Bitter's not the right word. Um, but you'll see. So get ready for that nice face that awesome. he's going to make. Because I'm going to make sure he's in plain view of the camera when this happens. All right. But I've not opened this since our last time meeting. So this oh, man. has been literally... Only exposed on times where y'all have been able to see it. Um, you can see the airlock here. Actually, I'm going to pop out the airlock since we're going to do this. Look how cloudy it is. This is so vigorous, the cider actually bubbled up into the airlock wow. and clouded it up. This is vodka in here, so right. vodka is not cloudy. Mm -hmm. Cider is. It's amazing. Um, so we're going to reuse this airlock. I'm just going to rinse it off. We're going to put more vodka in it later, but I might as well rinse the cider out. The floor view. We got this big glass. Uh, I want to call it a vat. It's, it's Carboy is the official name. Yeah. So let me go over the equipment here. Um, as of last time, as you know, this is uh, a carboy, and here is the top of the carboy with the bung hole. We're going to finger a bung hole to show you. <laughs> um, this is a bung. That is the name of it. And then the airlock will kind of go into the into there, and this will all go into the bung hole. And then we have our spoon. This spoon is merely to torture DJ Rebirth. It has no other. I get to drink from the spoon? Oh, man. No, you, I'm going <laughs> to. <laughs> yes, we're going to be. I'm just going to tip it back and just see how much you can fit in your stomach before you vomit. All right, let's do it. <laughs> this is a five gallon challenge. This is our gravity reader. We did this last time. Mm. We're going to take another gravity reading, see where we're at there. And then the star of the show here is our siphon. If you've ever seen that in like a movie, where the person like sucks the hose and gets the gas out of the car. Oh yeah. That's what we're gonna do here. Oh nice. Although we're not gonna literally suck on it because that would be that'd be weird and unsanitary. <laughs> How's but that work? It's an auto siphon. So oh, basically I'm gonna start it by uh -huh. pumping this and getting it flowing all the way through. Yeah. And then well the gravity, see how this is up high, this mm -hmm. is down low. Mm -hmm. Reason for that is gravity's gonna do the work for me. I'm not gonna have to pump it, it's just gonna go. Oh interesting. And it's all gravity based. That's awesome. And it's the same way they do it when you, when someone steals your gasoline from your car. Aha, uh -huh. bastards. It almost all happens every day because it's so violent here. <laughs> so everything's already sanitized and ready to go. I skipped that part of it for y'all. Um, let's just go ahead and open it up. Let's uh, let's do a reveal. Oh man, so this hasn't been open for two weeks, right? Two this weeks. Been sealed? Awesome. You can already smell just how like earthy oh, the totally. yeast, the expanded yeast. Is oh yes, yeah. yeah, it's, it's like a mushroom <laughs> cloud. I can already I can smell it. I'm gonna rack it before I give you a taste, otherwise the yeasty smell may actually make you vomit. So we're, yeah. we're gonna at least rack it first for you. We'll give you that benefit. Awesome. These things are snug on purpose because you don't want air escaping. Ah. All right, you can already see this is, this is disgusting. This is disgusting. Is that from the yeast fornicating or that's from the yeast? Uh, that's bubbling. So remember how it bubbled out? This is the bubbles and the residue from bubbling out. Ah. This yeast was extremely happy or Extremely horny, however you want to call it. it. Smells like beer. Look at all the bubbles. Wow. Look how like happy this yeast is right now. It's still going, actually. It was trying to ferment even after I brought it out here. See all the bubbles. Look at those bubbles, everyone. Yeah. 
So it's still actually an active fermentation, but honestly, it's 18% yeast, so like, I don't mind racking it now and letting it, letting it fornicate in the next vessel, that's fine. Um, I'm sure it's done a, a lion's share of the work now, and I can actually test that theory uh, by taking the gravity, because I don't know, this will probably be hard to see, but it has readings of possible uh, sugar convertible to alcohol. And 0% sits about right here. So if it hits that, then there's no sugar left, which would be unfortunate. You want some sugar. Mm -hmm. But we can always backswing if we have to. And I really honestly don't know how well this fermented. So awesome. we're going to about to see. The meeting step is racking. We are, we are racking this. This will be racked. In the, into the, the uh, not the bunghole. What's that giant jar called again? This is a carboy. Carboy. So I see it's above zero, which is good. Uh, it's sitting somewhere. I need to get this more into the light, actually. <laughs> one, zero, one, six. One, zero, one, six. One, zero, one, six. Hmm, I'm going to write that down. And that means that it is still pretty sweet, which is good. Um, normally a sweet mead starts at about 1.012, and mm -hmm. we have 1.016, so it's actually still pretty sweet. Mm -hmm. um, it's not quite to dessert levels. It's more, on the, it's more like between like medium and dessert, it's somewhere between there. So it's, a, mm -hmm. it's a sweet, but it's gonna ferment more once we, once we rack it. So I'm actually not even thinking it's gonna stay there. I'm thinking mm -hmm. it's gonna take out a lot more sugar before we're done. Sure. But we do have at least something that's drinkable right now. Oh, nice. So we'll see. I mean, it won't taste good, but it's drinkable. <laughs> um, but yeah, here's our nice siphon. One thing you gotta know about this when you're racking, this goes then, goes at the bottom, flush against the bottom of this carboy. Mm -hmm. At this point, we don't want any more oxygen in it. Mm -hmm. uh, oxygen is bad. It's going to create a, a really nasty flavor and color with your meat. Mm -hmm. So we're going to make sure that this is at the bottom. So as it rises, uh, it's not splashing. Ah. So, so is all the good stuff at the bottom? Is that, oh, that's where the, the yeast bottom. is. Oh, that's where the yeast is. Got the yeast it. actually, as it ferments, it knocks itself out to the bottom of, ah. of the... Uh, the plastic bucket, which you'll see, you'll see the yeast cake it's called, and it's, it's not yeast a cake, cake. you want to eat. <laughs> I think I, I, think I saw sure. something about that in your Discord, just about the uh, yeast cake looking uh, like a big old sponge. <laughs> this tool is cool. So well, two things I recommend about your siphon is, first of all, get an auto siphon because you don't want to sit there and have to pump this thing. Uh, that's the first thing. But the second one is this thing right here, this rubber ball. It actually uh, it has a, a line right here, about a centimeter up. That line is where it actually suctions in the, the mead so that you don't get the yeast cake. It has like an auto buffer against ah, that yeast cake. nice. So I don't have to hold it above the yeast cake. I can just put this in and let it go. It's literally the easiest thing you're ever going to oh, see. Oh, that's handy. So do we ever have to like clean it mid-process or is it just no, it's we're a, good. Smart, a smart pump? A smart we're good. Siphon. So I'm going to draw this back. And we're going to make sure it gets all the way through. And now we just let it go. Holy crap, look at that. I'll, I'll, I'll zoom you guys in so you guys can see what I'm seeing. Look at this. It's magic. The magic of gravity. This is literally 100% gravity. He only pumped it like one and a half times, and now gravity is doing the rest. Yep, and that's the reason why the bucket is higher. The plastic bucket's higher. This is all gravity, all magic. All earth magic. Science. <laughs> Again, like I always wondered before I started doing this, I never cared enough to look it up, but I always wondered how suctioning off gasoline worked, how they always do that in the movies. Now I know how. Um, so it's it's a cool little science trick. Are you excited for your taste though? Oh my God, you have no idea. This is a very interesting color. Now, my other sizer didn't come out this color. My other sizer was, uh, had a lot more green. Hmm. This looks, uh, what would you, I'm colorblind, so what would you describe this color as? Um, it's, you know, it looks just like apple cider. It's like brownish, orangish, tan, and kind of a, huh. yeah, it looks like pumpkin. pumpkin interesting. Juice. Yeah, it's an interesting <laughs> color. Kind of looks like V8, <laughs> V8 splash. <laughs> <laughs> it will not taste like V8. Which I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing at this point. We'll find out. 
Depends on uh, awesome. your preference of V8, which I'm not a fan, but you know. I don't even know. I don't even remember what V8 tastes like. Like so cold tomato. Oh, so. that's great. Oh, yeah. gross. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, cool. I'm guessing cold tomato soup. I don't know. Who, to, to, V8 in 2018? Is that a thing? Who here has drank a V8 in the past year? <laughs> it's like, purple. Oh, it's purple. My bad. I guess I'm colorblind, too. <laughs> <laughs> and what's up, Rock? Sorry, seeing who's here. Since Kamada, friends, everyone who decided to show up, welcome. Thanks for joining us, everyone. We're excited. The, the racking process, the racking and sampling. This is interesting. I did not expect this color. It's always a surprise when you open the bucket uh, after two weeks of not seeing it because you don't know what it's going to smell like, look like. Yeah. Still going. Look at that. It is still filling up. And you don't, is it pretty much going to just fill up like all the way? Like it's going to go to the top? Like it's hey, gonna... Yeah, as long as the uh, hose is below the bucket and there's fluid left, it'll keep on draining. That's amazing. Um, and there's that rubber piece I showed you earlier. Mm -hmm. It needs to stay above that line to keep oh, working because once gotcha. it, it drains out, then it's not going to work. So. And okay, so the carboys you do want to fill up about as fill, far as you can, and it goes back to that oxygen thing I was talking about. Uh, little oxidation is possible at this stage. The primary ferment is done. So uh, we want kind of that residual secondary fermentation, maybe knock another 0 0.004 off of it, get it to that medium range. Uh, as far as sweetness goes, but we don't really want a ton, so we're kind of disturb this as little as possible. It's uh, it's just it has to be sitting somewhere around 16, 17 percent alcohol already, so we don't oh, need man. it anymore. Nice. Looking forward to that sample. And yes, this is almost already done. I'd say this is 95-ish percent done fermenting. So there's a lot of alcohol in this. So that I can't make the excuse that this is just juice this time. This is very, very alcoholic at this point. <laughs> Two so, weeks. And how, how much longer in its like lifespan? Like you said, it takes months for something to turn into full blast meat, right? I mean, it'll be, it's meat right now. Oh, it's meat right now. Okay, well, Sicer, Sicer right now. Sicer. But it's not going to be delicious for another probably nine months. Ah. Um, it's going to sit in the secondary for maybe three. Mm -hmm. uh, and then eventually we're going to uh, rack it again and start clarifying it and putting some... Uh, Phosphate in it, so nice. Or oh. Not phosphate, uh, sorbate, potassium sorbate. Interesting. To make sure that the fermentation does not continue, because the yeast I use is eighteen percent. So if it's not at that level, I don't want it to get to that level. Mm -hmm. I want there to be a little sugar. That makes sense. So it's drinkable. And what happens like CT Cross? What's up? See you in a month, Ulti. Rachel Ray says. Hey, what's <laughs> up, Rachel? And Cross, how's everyone doing? We're just talking some meat here, as it as we use gravity to do the work for us. We're exploiting gravity and we're not even paying yeah. it minimum wage. Hey yo, keep it simple. Yeah, this is, Ulti literally pu pumped this pumper siphon, <laughs> my terminology here, just one and a half times and it's still going. It's literally just on its own. It's just filling up this wonderful. The hardest part about this whole process is the, is the sanitation and the cleanup, which I spare you all from because I'm not going to take you to my bathroom. That'd be weird. <laughs> so really, this is the easy part. This is, this is the fun part. It's almost satisfying just watching it fill up after, after you've had it sit there for two weeks, not even seen it, not even, it hasn't even like, emailed you, it hasn't <laughs> even Snapchatted you. It broke the streak. So yeah, this is, uh, this is about as exciting as it gets for racking it, and this is our really only task today. So what happens after you rack it? Like, so you, you were saying you know, it takes multiple months for it to turn delicious and what happens like from the time that it's racked to the time that it's becomes delicious what type of stuff do you need to do to it or what does it need to do to itself it's automated right yeah well, a lot <laughs> of it is actually so what's going to happen is uh the sediment's going to keep start like dropping to the bottom because we want it to be clear like believe it or not when we bottle this it's going to be clear you're going to oh, be really? able to read through it really uh and in fact one second let me i'll be right back entertain them for a second sounds good I don't, even, I don't even know where I've aimed this camera. Where am I? There we are. Hey, everyone. It's me, DJ Rebirth. If you want to learn more about me, just do exclamation point MC. That's about as good as it gets. But yeah, I'm learning so much about mead. I didn't even know what mead was. I've heard the term mead. I thought it was meat that you drink out of a, out of a cup. Turns out I was wrong. Speaking of which. So here's what I just bottled. Now, hold this up to light and put your hand on one side of it and tell me if you cannot see every detail of your fingers through it. It's very, well... 
because the brown is a brown bottle, so yeah. that's the reason why. Yeah, it's at all, but you can see through it. It's yeah. clear. It's obscured, but not. <laughs> so there's no sediment left in this. I did a cold uh, crash test. Again, cold crashing is uh, where you kind of dump sediment out of it using cold water or cold air. Ah. Um, I actually have an example of that too because I'm doing some sludge mead. <laughs> sludge mead. Uh, I'm trying not to disturb the sludge. Oh wow. So here's another example of this. So cold crashing, you can see you can see through this bottle. It's going to get very clear uh, the mead, but that's the sediment that will build up. Wow. And so what do you do with the sediment? Like after you, you know, after you bottle, after you put the clear stuff in the bottle, like what happens to the sediment? Do you need to like, you know, stuff that, you know, you can't like dump certain chemicals down the sink. Is that kind of the same thing? Or do you, can you literally just scoop it into a trash bag and say sayonara, throw it away? And I mean, it's not toxic. It's yeah. organic sediment. That's true. So I usually just dump it outside and let, oh, yeah. the, let dogs, because like I hate it when people take their dogs back here yeah. to shit because yeah. <laughs> like I live in a kind of a offshoot yeah. of this area. So people think if I, they take their dogs back here, mm -hmm. no one will see their dog shit. So right. they have to clean it up. Yeah. So I just dump it out there and I let the, nice. the people taking the dogs to shit out there to deal with that. That's good for, good for the environment, good for the plants, right? <laughs> That's how I get back at the dogs. Exactly. <laughs> Revenge. See, this is actually going to be more. I remember when I added actually uh, water to this batch because I yeah. wanted to make sure I had more than, yeah. than uh, still going. five gallons? I actually will probably have to stop this from pumping because it will overflow if I don't. Yeah. And then the excess will just dump out ah. at this point. Bummer. But we just want to, we want this to be very full, this glass one, but no more, I mean, obviously not overflowing. I can't mm -hmm. overflow and cap this thing. So we're getting very close though. Again, this is just one and a half pumps and this whole thing's filling up. There's so much science happening. You have no idea. You guys have no idea. The science is real. But yeah, crazy. So he doesn't just speed run bully and earthbound in other games, right? Yeah. He, he makes delicious, tasty drinks. <laughs> it's a party. Heck yeah. So when it's all done, you know, we're, we're just going to sit there and we're going to go through all five gallons and... Nice. And just make the stream watch us. Nice. Go five gallons. Here we go, meat. That's right, Vindictive Pat. A meatery pog. Heck yeah, Barbie Edge. Looks like, it does look like liquid butterscotch. I, I want to just... I want to take it and I want to dump it on my head because it just looks like apple cider and it's... We're about to find out if it tastes like yeah. it, too, once, oh, uh, once we have our taste test here. Heck, it's yeah. Like Face is getting all kinds of... Heck, yeah. All of the science. Delicious science. <laughs> yeah, you've seen some cool stuff today. You saw siphoning. You saw sludge mead. It's all sorts of fun things yeah. that you can do. That's right. And we have the, the sanitary, sterile black gloves. <laughs> Bring back some bad memories for some people. Hey, yo. <laughs> Yeah, sanitation. That's king. Yeah. Shit is getting real in here, Barbie. <laughs> I want to see drinking speedrun of five gallons. Well, uh, catch us on a Saturday. Join the Discord. You'll see. <laughs> Gamer friends. Look for it. <laughs> Game friends, yeah. We're going to start off some game friends again. Nice. Um, this is getting really close, and I don't want this to overflow, so I'm going to really watch this now, because normally I wait for the, the black piece to show in here, uh, and I know it's close to the bottom of this jug, but we're going to fill this up before we get to there, so I'm going to have to... For the first time in my meat making career, I'm going to have to cut this short of the siphon. I'm going to have to throw out some perfectly good meat. Oh, man. Um, because it's no use trying to keep some of it around. It's not, going to, it's not going to go well. Unless I were able to bottle it as well as I'm bottling this, which I won't be able to. Um, so as I said, I want this, I want this like, up to here. By the time it's done, to prevent air contamination. Yeah. Do, you, do you need to leave a, like, a little bit of air in there, or does it need to be basically filled to the, filled to the brim? As filled as I can get it. That's the goal. Awesome. But with room for that big old cap there, because that is a thick cap, so you have to you have to leave some space. I'm gonna wait till it gets to this very thin part, and then I'm just gonna just gonna pull it. It's good to go. Good old yank carefully. It's actually still fizzing, man. Oh, this man. is weird. It's like, crazy. This is a very very happy batch. <laughs> it's fermenting as I as I rack it. <laughs> that's amazing. See, that's why you always prepare mead with friends. So it becomes a happier batch. There it goes. Oh, 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 oh. oh. There we go. Man, this is be a there it goes. Oh, got a little drippy. Not too much. Yo, no, no, oh, no, it's still going. No, it's still going. Oh, crap. <laughs> so a little bit of a sticky mess. That's fine. <laughs> and if I spot again. There you go. <laughs> there we go. Awesome. 
So we'll just kind of wipe that up before it turns into a sticky mess <laughs> on the floor there. Most of it went on the towels, so we're okay. Let's wipe up the excess. <laughs> I mean, look, I swear it never happens like this. Um, we're not going to get to see the yeast cake if this continues. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drain the rest of this in the sink. And so you can see how nasty yeast cakes are. I think that's important for your experience. Absolutely. Rest in, rest in yeast. Yeast cake. Isn't this fun, guys? Aren't we learning so much? Just like last time, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago when we did this, we learned so much. And we're learning so much more now. There's so much learning, so much science. This is great. All right, so I'm just racking the rest of that into the sink where it's going to go to its final resting place there. We're going to make some, some rats in the sewers very happy. Oh, heck yeah. So. Yeah, it is a yeast cake, leftover yeast byproduct. You will see. It's, it's pretty disgusting, actually. So you can see how full this is. This is great. This is a really good batch here as far as volume goes. So that's, uh, I'm excited about that. Um, all we have to do now is, of course, put on our lid here. Um, one thing I will say about the lids is this rubber sucks. If you've ever used a carboy, it's hard to keep these lids on. A lot of the reason I found is because the moisture gets stuck between these plastic bits and then it almost like the moisture between these rubber panels almost pushes it up. And you don't want there to be air contamination. So I made sure I, I decontaminated it with a very acidic substance and then dried it off very carefully so that we don't run into the situation where this pops off mid-fermentation. So I wanna get that snug on there. And I'm not gonna put the airlock on because if I try to transport it with the uh, airlock in, then it will probably suck back all the vodka I'm gonna put in it. And, ah, vodka. Uh, we don't need this to be any more alcoholic than it is. It's sort of plenty <laughs> alcoholic. So um, we're not gonna put the airlock in yet, but we will put our, our bung into the bung hole. Um, Always put the bung in the bung hole, very important. But yeah, it's like most of your Friday nights. <laughs> Same process. And then the airlock's gonna go right into the little leftover space there. And the airlock is that thing that we've already seen, right? The thing with the, oh, yeah. with the, with the vodka? Yeah, that's the thing I showed that was cloudy. It's still a little mm -hmm. cloudy, yeah. actually. It's weird. What brand of vodka have you been using? Did we already talk about this? The Which... cheapest one I can buy. Nice. I don't even know the name of it because it doesn't matter. You're using it because <laughs> it's sterile, not because of... <laughs> It's flavor. You're not exactly. going to get any in there, hopefully. Yep. But yeah, there is vodka pat, vintage dip pat, but not to drink, just to... And you won't want to drink this. It's literally like the $6 vodka <laughs> bottle that's on, like at your liquor store's bottom shelf that they <laughs> that's collected dust because even like poor people don't buy it. Like <laughs> it's the, the crappiest vodka that exists. So you know it's good. <laughs> it was not made from potatoes. It was made from some <laughs> derivative substitute. <laughs> Wipe off our seat there. Got a little excited. Oh man. Aristocrat, exactly. High end, top shelf. Oh yeah, what we forgot to do though, you forgot to remind me, we need to get you a sample. Oh that's right. How do I how do I are we gonna scoop it off the top? Is that the best? Yeah, I mean this is this is gonna be less yeasty version, so we might as well give you this version. Awesome. I mean I can make you eat the yeast cake too. Oh man, oh dessert, heck yeah. I bet you you would have if I hadn't told you what it was. You know, fuck it, YOLO. <laughs> Just not trying to cause any splash. Awesome. Splash is bad. All right, make sure they can see your face when you taste this very awesome right. beverage. Here. It's gonna... So here Tell we us, are. Describe the flavors. Of, smell it. You know, swirl it. Like describe it. Experience it. So it smells like it smells like wine. To be honest, it smells very winey. It smells like red wine, literally. Wait. Yeah, it smells like red wine. I hate red wine. Well, it's cider based. So mm -hmm. there should not be any grapes in there. So we failed <laughs> today. All right. And it, uh, yeah, it looks, looks cidery. It's nice and orange, yellow, pink, tan, brown. All righty. Let's get, let's get a little taste. A little tasty, wasty. It's sugary. I'm not gonna lie, this tastes like white wine. I get, I get, I get wasted on this. Well, it's probably about 17% or so, so you Ooh. could very well get wasted on that. There is lots of alcohol in there. But it's not bad, it's drinkable already? 
Yeah, I'd say so. I would say we're going to have a pretty good batch then. Yeah, totally. It's drinkable now because now it's the... <laughs> I literally told him, like, this is the worst that it will taste. And I mean that. This is the worst that it will taste in Man, its whole entire life. It's not bad. Or, or I just have really low standards for uh, <laughs> tasting. You're buying food. the bottom shelf mm-hmm. vodka when you go to the store. Hey, man, I'm from California. You know, we can only buy so much. No, this isn't half, this isn't half bad. This is pretty, uh, pretty, pretty good. Oh, so here's our... Happy Those are nice yeast cakes. yeast cakes. You can see that it's Ew. just stuck to the bottom. It's plastered. Ew. Yeah. Look at that sludge. It's like snot, but with like yeast in it. <laughs> wow. And it smell like smell. Take a whiff. That does not smell like what you just Yeah, did. nope. <laughs> nope. That's why I didn't make you drink from this one. Not doing that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, not bad at all. Like. So yeah, I wanted to go take this to my death row of wines. I have three others <laughs> right now in the, in the row that are underneath a light dampening curtain because... I don't have anywhere to put it where it just won't see light. So I literally bought one of those light reducing curtains that yeah. I have like for my stream mm-hmm. and I just wrap it around yeah. all of them. So and you just have those on a schedule, right? Like, all right, this yeah. day I'm going to do the yeah. same thing that we did here today. That's why notes are important. Always take notes. Yeah, Handy dandy notebook. So that's going to be it for this part of the stream. I'm going to run bully right after this. I mean, give me 15 minutes because I want to clean yeah. out that yeast because it smells really bad. Yeah. So I want to clean it out. And before but, we go, do we have any, anybody have any questions, yes. any this is this is the AMA portion. Does anyone have any questions or comments? Did you guys like this? Did you like part two of the meeting process? And by the way, what's going to be the next process? And when is that going to be? What do, uh, we, what do we do next? We're really going to let this settle for probably, if we're patient enough, three months or so before we do the next step. So y'all are going to see this bad boy for a while. It's going to go into hiding. Um, and like me, it's not going to see sun for a long time. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we'll see it again, but not for a little bit. Very cool. Do so we have right. any questions before you cut and start speed running? Yeah. Instant switch over transition. You guys just, they're, they're just here for the speed running. You guys are like, all right, <laughs> where are my video games? All right. Wait, well, wait. Then, yeah, we can cut now. And then uh, thanks again to DJ Rebirth here. Shoot him a follow. Do the hey guys. Bang MC command. Bang MC. Only, just only like bang that. MC consens- consensually. Yeah. Uh, oh, Ulti's. Stream where ulti DJs. Oh, well, I do not tonight, but usually most Wednesdays I actually do a DJ stream. Uh, maybe maybe I can bring it here. We can do, do some crazy shit. But yeah, I do DJ streams on Twitch every Wednesday. I speed run Silent Hill Four and all sorts of stuff. But oh, and Pat actually did have a question. Missed why you cut it with vodka? Is that a step for any mead? Um, well, you can use anything for the airlock. The airlock putting fluid in it prevents. Um it's a couple things. It presents oxid- oxidation of your mead, so it prevents that nasty flavor that oxygen is going to give it. But also, on top of that, it uh, it stops. Um, I mean, that's the main reason um, is is to keep the oxygen out and the the bad particles out. But here's the thing: is that it can suck back on occasion. Um, when what happens is basically the pressure on the inside will suck back some of the fluid in it to the inside. And if you use water, there could be bacteria that's forming in there. There could be nasty flavors or if you use the tap water there could be like different types of chemicals in your tap water that you don't want to affect the flavor so vodka is a very neutral flavor i could dump probably three shots of vodka in that and you wouldn't taste a difference or even know it was in there um so it's going to distill anything or like kill anything that tries to make its way in through the airlock like bacteria or oxygen it's just going to kill it um and otherwise it's uh, also not going to affect the flavor if there's any suck back so that's why i use vodka and not just plain water and that's why we use the cheap vodka because if that can kill a human or if that can kill bacteria it can kill a human Wait, other way around but uh, <laughs> yes yeah glad it makes sense yeah. well awesome guys and gals we really appreciate again everyone coming by mr ulti he's going to get set up here to do his bully speed run i'm gonna i'm gonna take off and probably hop into chat and all that good stuff but again everyone thank you so much for joining us we appreciate it you guys rock It's time for a beat down. Beat down. All right. Hang tight, guys and gals. We'll be back with some bully shortly. Peace out, y'all.